Hey, stay with us in Bill O'Reilly in the Miller Time segment tonight. A lot to talk about, including the ruthless Iranian leader Ahmadinejad condemning the USA at the United Nations and then hopping into a car to visit Larry King. How many children do you have? Three? Boy, girl, what? One girl and two sons. How old? Two have been married. That means, well, first they graduated, and then they got married. <laughs> and one is a student at, uh, at the university. You don't look old enough to have married children. In Iran, we marry early. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Joining us now from Los Angeles radio talk show. Ahmed! Ahmed! Yeah, Mosul! <laughs> Go ahead! <laughs> I mean, look. I like Larry. Larry's a nice guy, but I'm sure I have never. I have ne that would be like <clears throat> in 1938, Heinrich Himmler coming to the UN. Okay, hate the Jews. Yeah. Kind of want to kill all the gypsies. Get those gay guys too. Then he goes over to CNN. And they go, "How many kids you got, Heinrich?" <laughs> I mean, jeez. your head's gonna blow. Adolf, off. how long does it take you to grow the stash, Adolf? How long? <laughs> What do you think here, Miller? <laughs> well, I'm just surprised Larry didn't have him on his OJ panel. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a bad sign at the beginning when he went to the pixelated background there on the old Larry King set and unscrewed all the bulbs that illuminated Israel. I thought that was a big tell. Listen, to me, once a guy thinks I'm Satan, it's a bad starting point for a relationship. I mean, like three hours earlier, he's standing in, a, in front of 63 guys in a fez, this Corporal Klinger lighting double, calling us Satan, then all of a sudden he's over at Larry. To me, it's a bad point of departure for relationship. It's like Clint Eastwood sleeping with Jessica Walter and play Misty for me, and the next day she shows up unannounced to cook dinner. It's just creepy. It creeps me out. But it's here's not what a good I don't starting understand. point. Here's what I don't understand. You got this guy, Ahmadinejad, who's going to try to develop nuclear weapons to kill everybody or whatever he wants to do. He comes into your studio. All right. You've got him there. You've got the flowers. You got you got everything. And you're, you're asking him about his his kids. And, and he doesn't look old enough to have grandchildren. I you would think that CNN would have just written him a few questions like, why are you an anti-Semite? Why don't you just cooperate with the world? Why does the United Nations want to condemn you and all the nations hate you? You know, and then talk to him about his shoes or his wristwatch or whatever. But no, it was it was staggering. All right. Yeah. The economic meltdown. You got any money left, Miller? Well, you know, Bill, I'm not very good at picking stocks. I remember once I bought uh, a goodly portion of JDS Uniface. The next day I tuned in to uh, the stock market channel, and it had just won a cliff diving championship in Mexico. So short of putting my money in my mattress, and I did that once, and they took all the money the government because I had ripped the tags off the mattress, I'm putting all of my personal fortune in the factor gear. Factor gear is it, boy, and that stuff goes up in value. You know, you yes, three, does, four, Billy. five years from now on eBay, you triple your investment. <laughs> and plus, poor people well, get I'm help. Glad by I don't have. I'm glad I don't have a lot of money in the market. And quite frankly, you'd be better off right now giving your money to a colorblind roulette addict than you would putting it in the stock. But you, you have to, you have to send your kids through college, and you have to do what every other American has to do. And a lot of Americans are losing confidence in the, in, you know, some, look, look, it's rigged. It's a rigged game. Well, listen, Bill, I have to do what other Americans have to do, but I think it'd be disingenuous to say I haven't made a good buck off of being in show business, so it's not exactly as rough it is, as it is on some people. I'll tell you a way I've always governed my life as far as fiscal policy goes is I'm smart enough to know that I'm dumb about it. So I surround myself with smart people in much the same way a hole surrounds itself with a donut. I just pay things off. That's all I do. I pay so things you have off. Swifty, and that is you have Swifty making your investments and everything going, Dennis, baby, <laughs> I just got you some land in Costa Rica. And you go, oh, that's good. That's what you, you're you no, doing no, the Billy I, I, Joel routine. You know, Billy Joel made like $100 million, and all of a sudden some guy named Monty took it all, went to Uruguay. You're not doing that, uh, are Monty. you? 
No, Monty was his P.O.'d brother-in-law, quite frankly. I would never do that. I just pay things off. Whenever I buy something, a car, I try to pay houses off. That's all I do. So you're that not mad about this? Me. You're not mad about the government not telling anybody and the greedy pinheads ruining the economy? Sure I am mad about it. I think if they give that $700 billion check to Paulson, they ought to make it like a PGA winner's check on the PGA Tour. That big check, at least we have the photo opportunity. And as far as these golden parachutes go for these guys who muck it up, I think they actually ought to give them golden parachutes and make them jump out at around 18,000 feet. I can't, yeah, here's a real I one. <laughs> yeah. I'd like that. I like that, Miller. Yeah, I think we might be working on that. All right. I'm glad, All right. I'm glad you're okay out there. I'm glad nothing's going on. And if you see Larry King, you know, tell him next time, give me a call, give him some questions.